I've been pretty vocal over the last couple of months about what I consider to be Flutterflow's greatest failure. Users of Superbase don't get iOS push notifications in Flutterflow. This broke my brain. How could something so fundamental be missing from Flutterflow? So I went on a quest to figure it out. There are YouTube videos about push notifications with Superbase, but it took me hours of frustration before I realized that that content only applies to Android. There were tons of articles and questions and community forum posts, but in the end, it was clear that if you wanted iOS push notifications with Superbase Auth on, you actually had to abandon Flutterflow, download the code, hope you owned a Mac, and use Xcode from there. I came to Flutterflow to avoid all that shit. But in the end, I discovered that there are only two minuscule edits that have to happen to make it all work. The problem being that you couldn't edit the specific configuration files in Flutter that needed these critical alterations. This week, Flutterflow gave us access to edit these files. So come with me as we go on a journey to iOS push notifications with Superbase Auth. I've written up all the steps that I'm going to take in this video in a free article where you can grab all of the code you need. Link is in the description. I'm going to assume some basic familiarity in this video, namely that you've set up a Flutterflow project with Superbase Auth, you're aware of role level security, you've followed the docs for setting up the App Store and the Play Store deployments, and also that you've set up Firebase. Your first question might be, why am I setting up Firebase if I'm in Superbase land? Superbase doesn't do push notifications, so you'll need another provider. And one signal is a popular alternative, but for me, the no-brainer is to use Firebase cloud messaging because of the existing deep integration between Firebase and Flutterflow. To start off, make sure that your authentication provider is Superbase. And you'll actually notice that if you turn on push notifications with Superbase as the authentication provider, it will actually error out anyway. So we have to keep this off. So with that in mind, go to permissions and you're going to have to turn on notifications yourself and add your own permission string. And it's important to do this because I've been rejected by the App Store before for having a permission string that wasn't appropriate. Okay, next you want to go to app state and add an app state variable called FCM token and give it the type string. Next, you want to go to custom code and create a new action. I'm going to call this action set FCM token. I'll add the boilerplate. And then you can just paste the code that will be presented in the article that I have attached in the description of this video. The other thing you'll need to do is come down to PubSpec dependencies and add Firebase messaging. I'll click the refresh button and then I'll save this action and compile it. So just very quickly, this custom code only has one job and that's to set the FCM token. And this is what had me confused for the longest time because actually what was happening was that I tried to use this messaging get token method and that was causing an error on iOS devices. So what I did was I set up this catch statement so that the FCM token app state could be the error. So you can display that if you're having issues and see if it's setting the FCM token properly or not. The next thing to do is to go to main.dart and apply this file. So go to final actions and apply set FCM token here. Don't forget to click save. Now here's where the magic happens that we couldn't do before. We can edit things like the info.plist and the runner entitlements file. For info.plist, all you need to do is add a property. I'll call it Firebase app delegate property. And the value is just the key, Firebase app delegate proxy enabled and true. So I'll add that, I'll save it. That's all I need to do. And then in runner.entitlements, I will go and add an entitlement. I'll give it a name of APS environment. And then I just need key APS environment string production. That's all it is. I'll add that and click save. And those two tiny tweaks now allow me to use the get token method in the Firebase messaging SDK. And so now when the app starts up, that app state variable SCM token is going to be populated. That means all I have to do is send it to Superbase. Okay, so this is a fresh Superbase project and what I normally have and what the Flutterflow docs recommend you do is create a user's table in the public schema. I'll also generally link the ID as a foreign key to the ID in the auth users table. And then what I need to do is I just need to add a new column and call it FCM token and give it the value of text. Okay. Now that that's done, the other table that I want to create is notifications. And I have a SQL snippet in my article. So actually, if you want, you can just copy it from there and run it. So now I've created this notifications table. And by the way, in this example, I have or less security turned off. I generally find that if you're doing something a bit more complex, it's not such a bad idea to turn off 
or less, assuming you're not in production, just so it's one less thing to debug, but it's really important to turn it back on again when you're done. Now this notifications table, it's got title, it's got body. These are for the push notification itself. Then there's recipient ID, who do send the push notification to. And then I also have an is read Boolean so that this can show up in a notifications list and the user can know which notifications they've read. I've also foreign keyed the recipient ID to the UUID value of the user's table, the UUID of the ID here in the user's table. Okay, back in Flutterflow, I will add my super base URL and super base anonymous key and I'll get that schema. I've also set up a super simple UI with sign up and sign in logic for Superbase. Now this part's really important. When I go to create an account in the action flow editor, first I'm going to create the account, but then I need to do a backend call and I'm going to need to insert the row. And that row might have display name and a couple of other user details, but in this case, it's also important to set the FCM token. And I'm setting the FCM token from the app state because I already have this app state variable FCM token, and that's been set by my custom code on startup. So now when a user gets created, I'll be able to save the SEM token from their device into their user profile table record. And likewise, it's also a good idea to do this on login. So in sign in, I also have an action for updating the row. And in that case, I just need to set the SEM token. I don't need to worry about the other fields. So now I've actually gone ahead and deployed the app to test flight. Here, I'll go ahead and make an account. And in Superbase Auth, here is my user account. And then in the users table, I also have a row that corresponds to this user and it has the same ID as I had for Superbase Auth. And because I set up this action in Flutterflow, I actually have the SCM token saved in Superbase now as well. The next thing now to do is to create an edge function. If you've never used edge functions before, it's a good idea to brush up before you continue here, as I'm not gonna go through the basics. So I've linked up my project locally using the Superbase CLI. And I can use this superbase functions new command to create a new superbase edge function called send push notifications. If you open up these files in a code editor, you'll have a superbase directory and you'll have a new functions folder with an index.ts file. And if you go to the link in the description, you can actually grab the edge function that I use and just paste it in here. Now, this edge function is heavily based on one that superbase actually provides for you. So you can feel free to check that out as well and see the different changes that I've made. But the important parts of this is that there's a notification table that it knows about, and there's gonna be a webhook that we're gonna set up in a second. And then what it does is it dives in and it grabs the FCM token from the user's table. If you've called your user's table something else, it's important to change that here. And the edge function goes ahead and it authenticates itself with Firebase. And then it uses FCM to send the push notification. We're also gonna need the Firebase service account credentials. So you come here to project settings over to service accounts in your Firebase project, and you create a new private key. Now take the file that you got from Firebase, rename it to service-account.json or whatever you have written here in the cloud function and place it into the functions directory. Then we'll go ahead with the client with Superbase functions deploy, send push notifications. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and test our push notification edge function. Superbase actually provides you with some code in different languages to invoke your cloud function. I'm going to use curl in this example, and I need to modify it a little bit as well, but it's important to grab this bearer token first. So making sure the URL is correct, the function name is correct, the bearer token is inputted, and the data is in place. I can go ahead and try this edge function. Make sure to insert a title, a body, and a recipient ID. I only have one user in my database, so it needs to be the ID of that user. And so I can go ahead and execute that. Now that my edge function is working and my Flutterflow application is set up properly, the last thing to do is to create a webhook so that when I create a row in the notifications table, it will automatically send the push notification. For that, I come over to database and I go for webhooks. So I'll create a new webhook. I'll name it trigger push notifications. The table is going to be in the public schema and it's going to be notifications. It's going to be an insert event. It will be a super base edge function, a post, it's gonna to go to the uh, edge function, send push notifications, and that's all you need. So now I can just go ahead and create a new row manually in the notifications table. I'll go test, test. And I need the recipient ID again. And I'll go ahead and create the row. So there's my push notification, and I've confirmed it's working correctly. So all I have to do now is set up RLS and I'm done. There are a few things that I didn't cover in this video, such as deep linking and app badges, and hopefully I'll get to those in a later video.
Do remember that you have alternatives, and if you're interested in a method where you can use Firebase Auth alongside Supabase, then check out this video next. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.